Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. And speaking of hypocrisy, all of these woke radical lefties, if you're going to get into this political game that, by the way, you've created, a world with such ridiculously high social standards of political correctness, especially if you're going to stand on the left side of politics that looks down at everyone else as being backwards and bigoted, well, one thing you definitely don't want to do is have the same Twitter account for, let's say, nearly 10 years with all kinds kinds of tweets that date all the way back that you never deleted that show, well, you're not a perfect saint of an individual yourself, you're no Mother Teresa, as you lecture the rest of the world. And so we gotta talk about Gwen Berry. Yup. When this story first came out, I know a lot of people in the conservative world covered it, but for the most part, I didn't care too much about it. Another wannabe Colin Kaepernick, who cares? But now, turns out that Mrs. Activist Athlete, Mrs. America is such a terrible place and everyone and everything is racist, turns out she has a racist this past on her Twitter account that she never deleted. <laughs> Oh, wow. Another Chrissy Teigen, I suppose. Lefties pretend to be pillars of virtue and compassion, but each and every single time, it turns out, they don't live up to the same standards that they apply on everybody else. Which is probably the most disgusting element of cancel culture as a whole. The horrendous double standards and hypocrisy. So let me show you guys some of these tweets, and then we'll go on a little bit of a tangent, and we'll talk about some other things that I think are related. But before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We're still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm rhythm hidden from non-subscribed viewers. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So as my saying goes, surprise, surprise, surprise to no one. Olympian Gwen Berry's problematic tweets unearthed amid anthem uproar. And you know, like I always say, you all know my perspective on cancel culture, but you have to admit when it backfires on the left, especially the far left Wokies, who are the founders of cancel culture, there's just something about it. Like I always say, something so poetic about it that makes it satisfying. Do I think that she should be canceled and lose her job? Blah, 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 etc. Absolutely not. But the backfire, the backlash, the hypocrisy is just incredible. Take a look. The 32 year old's tweets likely came when she was in her early 20s. As of Friday afternoon, the tweets were still active. SO to all females that's gon' get drunk, get wrecked by four dudes, then cry. I'm assuming she wrote R A P E this weekend. I'm about to R A P E my lunch. White people are so blurred out when they are drunk. Basketball wives is proof that white people run they got damn mouths too much and they noisy as hell and they start drama by the way crazy talk blk and a bunch of expletive mexicans just don't care about people just saw this girl wearing heels with white socks what the hell hashtag chinese people always try to start new trends shake my head girl this lil white boy being bad as hell i would smack something then stomp him shake my head hashtag white people kids hella disrespectful now of course you got to commend the queen's england absolutely eloquently written by our activist athlete friend gwen berry who's a role model in all aspects but i mean come on these are the types of individuals who are trying to make radical change in society they are in no position to do so the reality is all human beings are flawed and lefties pretending as if they're like i always say mother Teresa is a complete farce at the end of the day it's narcissism if you ask me gwen berry finished third in the qualifiers just within the US. She shouldn't even be a headline. But instead of us talking about the first US seed, the top athlete within that field, who by the way broke her own record, we're talking about the broken record that is far left advocacy revolving around just how bad America is. And what's always the question when we're talking about this type of topic, if America is just so bad and so evil, then why are you still here? If America is so evil and has held you back your entire life, then why are you representing the country on the world? World stage and have been given the opportunity to excel, be at the top of your game and represent the country in the first place. It might have something to do with woke leftism being full of it. Benny Johnson had a great tweet that puts it all into perspective. Your child before critical race theory, your child after. This was Miss Gwen Berry a couple years ago, standing proud with the American flag, a country that's given her every single opportunity for her to find success, that she's now going to represent on the Olympic stage. And of course, this is her now. It's radicalization that's really what it is. Living in the greatest country on earth, but pretending as if you're part of some underclass in a totalitarian regime, it's a complete farce. And I mean to take that to a whole other level, North Korea defector criticizes Gwen Berry and calls her spoiled. You're pretending as if you're living in some sort of dystopian nightmare after studying critical race theory and people who escaped 
communism escaped North Korea because they were literally starving is looking at you thinking, how foolish. It's the demoralization and the radicalization of an entire generation, a plague that seemingly ravaged its way through society and infected the majority of millennials, going from normal American children in the early 2000s to American hating extreme leftists in the late 2010s. And we're seemingly living in some sort of opposite land, some sort of twisted reality where being a patriot and loving your country, being a Republican tags you as some sort of extremist. Meanwhile, people on the left who openly advocate for violence, dox, attack, attack, ostracize, exile individuals, and have bought into some sort of collective woke ideology, far left dogmatic brainwashing, are viewed as those who are woke. Facebook begins issuing disturbing warnings about extremism to its users. Violent groups try to manipulate your anger or your disappointment. You can take action now to protect yourself and others. Get support from experts. Who do you think that's targeted towards? Lefties? Absolutely not, folks. Let me reword, let me paraphrase what that says. You may be angry at the bias, the attacks, the smears against President Donald Trump and might not be happy that the system is rigged against you and your political candidate. If you are angry about the Democrat machine that controls everything, you may be a terrorist. Get some help here so we can further indoctrinate you on how to not be a bigot. It's absolutely disgusting. The literal hive mind that act like a group of white blood cells attacking anything foreign as if it's some sort of virus are going to lecture you on extremism and more specifically ideological extremism. Meanwhile, Antifa is burning things with impunity, tearing down statues, doxing people on Facebook. But you know, they're good because they vote for Democrats. Andy Ngo, however, the journalist who merely covers Antifa and puts public images of inmates, Antifa inmates who are booked through the system, public images that are accessible to the public through any government jail database. Well, he's an extremism and you better stay away from him. Mumford and Sons co-founder says God gave him courage to leave the band after Left attacked him for praising conservative reporters' book. A benign statement of, I read Andy Ngo's book on what's going on with Antifa in Portland and I thought it was a good book. And Lefty swarmed on him like a bunch of killer bees. Who are the extremists? Oh, it must be Andy Ngo. The guy who just takes pictures of extremism and writes about it on his Twitter feed. Oh, he's a real spooky dude. And then we have dorks like Sonny Hostin from The View pushing against this idea that Andy Ngo is just a benign journalist. No, he's a real spooky dude. Listen to her argument. Um, the suggestion somehow that Andy Ngo is, um, uh, you know, a tried and true, um, well-respected journalist and that this tweet was completely benign and innocuous is just really not true. I mean, Andy is known as being a very controversial figure. He is known as um, being right wing. Um, he is known as being a Twitter troll. He um, has a lot of his claims have been debunked. Um, his book has been reviewed uh, many, many times by reputable organizations as being found disreputable. She literally said nothing. She said a bunch of phony journalists and a bunch of angry lefties on Twitter have claimed that Andy Ngo is a controversial figure. That's literally what they say about anybody who's right wing, a provocateur, a controversial figure. No evidence doesn't cite any actual research or any actual sources or reason behind her statements. Just that Andy Ngo bad because Andy Ngo right wing. And it's a perfect example of exactly what's wrong with the left who have completely disconnected themselves from reality. View everything through the prism of right and left, or leftist partisanship, have created an ideology of dividing people based on identity, of self-censorship, of external censorship, enabling massive corporations and technocrats to push for more power through this ideology. They've enabled violence, they've sometimes cheered it on, all while pointing the finger towards the other side as being the side that's rewriting history and ushering in a new era of fascism. Newsflash, you guys are the extremists, you guys are the fascists, and anyone with at least two working brain cells should be able to work that one out. As long as you have one circuit in your brain that's intact, it should be absolutely obvious to see. And it really all comes full circle straight to CRT, as Betty Johnson said, your kid before CRT, your kid after, and the damage is fully visible. That's what I got for you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We're still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm. I gotta get back to work though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.